Hello and welcome to another video of our tech reviews. Today we'll take a look at the LSI Warp Drive 3.2 terabyte. When we talk about LSI, the first thing you will think of is their hardware rate controller. But yes, they make SSDs too, but only for the enterprise market. Let's take a look at the actual card itself. It is a very heavy card with aluminum heat spreaders. According to the official data sheet, the 3.2 terabyte models we have here has a 280k random read and 200k random write performance. It has a throughput of 4 gigabyte per second read and a 2.5 gigabyte per second write. It has an ASIC based controller inside of FPGA and it is actually bootable. Another impressive thing here is its endurance. The 3.2 terabyte model is rated for a whopping 117 terabyte endurance. That is comparable to the enterprise level Optane P4800X. One thing differs it from a normal enterprise PCIe SSD is that this is not an NVMe drive. Instead, there's 8 mini SAS SSDs on board, and LSI uses SAS to PCIe bridge to transmit the data between the SSD and the rest of the system. The card is fairly easy to take apart. All you need to do is take out the screws in the back and then unplug the drives. Now let's take the mini drives apart and see what's inside. It is a little hard to focus on the chips, so uh, I took pictures instead. Each drive has a Sandforce controller and a Toshiba EMLC NANs. The model of the Sandforce controller is SF-2258VB1. I can't find much info about it online. The only thing I found is that it's an enterprise level SAS controller with maximum throughput of 500 megabytes and random IOPS of 60K. And for the memory, it is a 64 gig, 24 nanometer EMLC chip. Eight of them makes 512 gigs and 512 gigs times eight makes a four terabyte total. So LSI actually reserves 800 gigs of the whole four terabyte as over provisioning, which is 25% of its total capacity. That was a common practice back in its days and the Intel P3700 also has a 25% of capacity as over provisioning. This kind of explains how it achieves the 117 terabyte endurance. Enough said, now it's time to plug it in and run some benchmarks. However, our system refused to boot. It is stuck at a post screen. And it's not that hard to figure out why. Cause the drive is burning. I'm not even exaggerating here. I have a cup of freshly brewed coffee next to me, and this thing is even hotter than my coffee. I guess it kind of makes sense, because those were designed to using servers and data centers that requires high airflow. So instead of putting that on the test bench, I have to put it in an actual PC case with adequate airflow. Now the drive starts to perform normally, and I was able to boot it into Windows. So firstly, let's check Crystal Disk Info. However, the drive does not show up in the drive list. It turned out that I have to use LSI's own monitoring tool to access the smart data of the drive. And the tool is command line based. So um, let's take a look. You can see the drive is running at 45 degrees idle, which is pretty hot comparing to other drives. Let's see how it performs in benchmarks and hopefully it does not throw throttle. When it comes to comparison, considering it's $15,000 brand new price tag, the closest thing I have on hand is an Intel P3608 3.2TB drive. It uses 20 nanometer EMLC chip with a sequential read speed of 4500 megabytes per second and a sequential write speed of 2600 megabytes per second. Another interesting fact of the P3608 is it also uses onboard RAID, just like the warp drive. Instead of using 8 drives, the P3608 uses two P3600 SSDs and connect them with a PLX chip and it looks kind of like a dual GPU video card. Here are the benchmarks. First is the Avio storage benchmark. They are achieving very similar scores, however Intel is almost faster in all the specs, but not by a lot. However, the uh, warp drive actually beats Intel on a 4K performance, both in IOPS and the throughput. For Crystal Disk Mark, things are a little bit different. They actually trade blows on sequential read and write. However, Intel is much faster in terms of 4K performance, thanks to the NVMe protocol. The results are similar in AS SSD benchmark. 
Intel has much better 4K RAM write performance and end up having a score that almost doubles the warp drive. In HD Tomb sequential testings, the Intel also has a much better advantage and is having a much flat curve compared to the warp drive. In HD Tomb file transfer test, Intel is able to achieve about 20% faster in sequential speed, while about 5 times faster in 4K single and multi tests. In the ATTO benchmark, they have very similar scores. However, Intel has taken a hit in write performance with the smaller file sizes. So conclusion, the LSI warp drive is a really interesting piece of tech, although it is not as fast as the newer PCIe SSDs, but LSI achieved such performance with SAS drives and without NVMe protocol, and that was seven years ago. And it has impressive endurance and reliability. I know TLC has improved a lot over the years, but if I were to shop for a larger capacity SSDs for data storage or scratch disk, I would definitely go with this one instead of a newer TLC base drive. They can be found on eBay for a very decent price in my opinion, but your mileage may vary. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.